We all know Windows if you're average, Linux if you're octane fall hats, or Mac if you think it's a vibe but never actually use it. Though you may or may not be shocked to find out there have been other operating systems out there that have tried to compete with the big boys like Android and iOS that ended up failing spectacularly. In this first part of the series, I'll introduce you to three operating systems who showed a lot of potential, but stop that van, straight potential. So stick around to find out why and you may be surprised to you know where they are today. Our contender for third place wasn't a complete failure in its own right, and in fact, it powers hundreds of millions of devices today, just not in the way that you might think. And the century is a prime example of what happens when you push the right technology into the wrong market. QNX was developed by Gordon Bell and Dan Dodge, two University of Waterloo students, in the early 80s and released in 1982. They relocated to Canada, Ontario, launching their company, Quantum Software Systems, to develop a real-time operating system specifically designed for embedded hardware. The software was built in C and C++, later upgraded to C++14, and it was built on a microkernel RTOS with a message pressing architecture that supported the POSIX model, short for Portable Operating System Interface. QNX did not fail to deliver and went on to power over 255 million vehicles as of 2023 alone, which included leading companies such as BMW, Ford, Toyota, Volvo, and more. It failed to enter the smartphone market because it was never intended to be a general purpose desktop operating system like Windows or Mac OS. The BlackBerry Playbook and BlackBerry 10 were the companies attempted at this, but it never caught on with the average Joe and Jane. And this problem was made worse by the fact that it was a closed source, meaning there was no wider global community of contributors to help maintain it. But our next field OS faced a worse fate by getting orphaned by its own developer. Once upon a time, there was an English company named Acorn, and entry number two on our list was its big bet on ARM-based architecture, Risk OS. The operating system came out in 1987 and had promised speed with a modular build, and the cherry on top was a name that sounded like a throat infection. It began as Arthur OS, a chip of Acorn's Archimedes and Risk PC computers, and it was even later forked into a system called NCOS for set-top boxes, like Oracle's network computer. By 1999, Acorn gave up on its development, but a new company named RiskOS Limited was formed to license the software and a third party, Castle Technology, kept the boat afloat with the open source RiskOS 5 and its Acorn clone, the Ionix PC, in 2002. RiskOS was different for, because it booted right from ROM for speed and used CMT, short for cooperative multitasking, which in a nutshell meant that one app taking a quick short nap would have the whole system waiting politely. Its file system was also distinct in the sense that it used colons, periods, and hexadecimals for file types. It had Windows users back then in the days. The open source nature of RiskOS gave it backward compatibility with apps built in BBC Basic. And today, it even runs on a Raspberry Pi, and there's a smaller size version named Pico, which is basically RiskOS but stripped down to the bare bones. RiskOS had a lot of potential, but why was it never realized? For one, everything was coupled with Acorn hardware, imposing limitations, and the addition of a lack of strong developer support, plus Windows monopolizing the home OS market back then meant it couldn't keep up. Add this to the fact that it wasn't well marketed outside the UK and you get a bunch of potential users abroad who couldn't care without knowing what it was in the first place. Ownership became complicated once the OS became an orphan and it never achieved mainstream adoption. But our next entry faced a similar fate, getting abandoned by its developer and even having digital rights management support as for its demise. Really? Last, but certainly not least, we have Mozilla's Firefox OS. Released on February 21st, 2013, Firefox OS was a Mozilla Corporation's attempt to break into the mobile OS market, an, an open source and web-based operating system. It was first announced on July 25th, 2011, as the company's secretive new Boot to Gecko project, or BCG, and demoed in February 2012, running on Android-compatible smartphones. It was launched officially later that month and even managed to reach 14 carriers in 28 countries by December 2014. It was built using Linux and used Gecko, the browser engine using Mozilla's Firefox browsers, and what made it different from the competition was its use of JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS to run web apps. It was sort of Chrome OS for phones back then. 
part of OxOS was developed with a free layer architecture, which consi consisted of, and uh, forgive me for pronouncing this wrong, but Gonk, a platform denomination designed to combine the Linux kernel with the hardware abstraction layers from Android, Gecko, Firefox's browser engine, and Gaia, a UI system built with JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS. Firefox OS targeted a completely web-based interface, ditching native apps and making the system more lightweight compared to its competition. It was also intended for low-budget smartphones such as Mozilla's $25 phone that it gave up on eventually, but while they were still supported, Firefox OS phones were rolled out in major parts of Europe, Latin America, and Asia. However, its greatest strength for a web-based interface was also its greatest weakness. The lack of native apps made developers hesitant to move away from the two operating systems that were dominating at the time, Android and iOS, with the solution being to develop ports for web. It was also launched at a time when the market had already been monopolized by Google and Apple, and its small carriers, mainly ZTE, Huawei, and Alcatel, stopped production as the devices were too underpowered to drive mainstream adoption. The final step in the back came from Mozilla's divided attention in trying to compete with connected devices like TVs and IoTs. Internet of Things Although it was open source, Mozilla managed to anchor their community through the the limiting of DRM system that came with Firefox OS in version 38. In 2015, a streaming stick based on Firefox OS, Matchstick TV, tried to add the DRM system, but that led to its own demise, which was coined suicide by DRM. Yikes. In the aftermath of the disaster, Firefox OS was succeeded by KaiOS, which is now discontinued, and before KaiOS was B2G OS, which was replaced by the former. The 2000s had a sprawling young market of experimental tech compared to today where we, we, all we have is pretty much Microsoft, Google, and Apple, but these three were a good lesson on the do's and don'ts of building your own OS. But if we want to divide, dive deeper into the heart of the web, the browser you're watching this video on, click this video on the left to find out why Google pays Apple, of all companies, $15 billion a year to fund its search monopoly, or subscribe for part two. See you there.